study and then go up for magnet and they receive magnet. And then Pennsylvania hospitals up here, Somerset Medical Center in um, the um, New Jersey area. The other one is Susquehanna Hospital. Now they were six hours away from it. They were up in Williamsport. We used to use Zoom and Skype. And what we did is they also replicated different studies. And the newest one they did, they just finished this one, just got published in the Caring Journal, if you're familiar with the Caring Journal, and Zane Robinson Wolf. She's the editor. She was my overall dean of health and human services at LaSalle University when I was a nurse. It turns out that the nurse up in Susquehanna, RN, just get their BSN. She wanted to bring evening care back to the bedside. Back rows with the patients, fluffing their pillow, and she showed a difference. And that is in that journal, and she just presented it at Sigma Theta Tau International in, in um, Las Vegas. So, I mean, exciting things. And we did all that remotely. I'm still working with them and still have that team from the West Coast. And then um, the other group here is the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands. I go to the Magnet Conference in Anaheim about three years ago, and aren't they there? And they say, Dr. B, are you coming back to the Netherlands? And I go every other year to the Netherlands with the one consortium group about patients and families and their perspectives, like I said, and making sure their environments are safe or we have the environment that is best for them. It turns out that they then invited me specifically to their hospital and they're working toward magnet. And the last time I went, I just went and I'm going in June again, but when I went in 2014, they had all of the courses of magnetism up. So from the year before, they had done so much more. So it's very exciting, the work they're doing, and they're really asking the patients and their families their perspective. And what are the interventions that are best? Then the last part here, National University, where I did locate to from the West Coast first before coming to Phoenix, where I am now. They wanted the plane tree. Are you familiar with plane tree? With the patient in the center of care? And that's what we worked on initially with the Newman's work of making sure the patient's in the center of care. And then we have primary prevention in the community the patient is, secondary prevention, the patient's in the hospital or healthcare setting, and then they transition back to either their own in tertiary prevention or back into some type of long care facility. So that, again, is very related to the plane trick. Sharp healthcare system is used in plane trick, and we merged with them from an academic setting at National University. Then the last couple here are the two I'm working with now. Presbyterian healthcare system is in Albuquerque and all of New Mexico. They're putting their eighth hospital in, and we're doing a practice and academic partnership. And we have right now one student in the masters, and we're working on our graduates, four of them, looking at their residency program. So that's exciting. And the last one I got invited to back in the fall, and now again the other day, Assistio Home Care in Phoenix. Four of the nurses still don't have their bachelors, and they absolutely need to get the bachelors in home care today. And they're afraid to write a paper afraid to get back. And I said, I'm here for you. You just remember, we're right here. That's what we're here for. And all the faculty, whether it's here or the online programs I had back in the East Coast or even in California, that is what we're here for. We have office hours online to help you. And that is the key. And we are here to find out then what it is your patients and the family problems are, and to help you with that literature search. And when you look at the magnet model, 
and you look at empirical outcomes right in the center, it has to be that evidence-based and or research that shows what the outcomes are. It can't be, I just think that. It has to be shown in a systematic approach. That is why when the nurses kept saying to me, how do we really show this? I said, we show it by documentation. Then we do a research proposal or an evidence-based project so that you're able to show your outcomes. And that is the best way. So what is the problem you have identified related to patients and families to have safe environments? That's the big question. Anyone here have any areas you're thinking about, you've been thinking about, or that you're already doing evidence-based projects on to walk and or research or your own a program um, at your hospital where you're working on different areas or you're back in school and you're doing this? Anyone, any takers out here? Go ahead. Right. So physiologic parameters, obviously. But then there's going to be some psychosocial, obviously, if you've got any problems with any type of um, your oxygenation, right? Right? Any others? How about the returning to the hospital in less than 30 days? That's a big one, right? Because the hospital does not get reimbursed anymore, right? Because it's all prospective. And if it's before 30 days, no money. Right? And everyone's thought of us, oh, someone did something wrong. When we all know the patients went home, they didn't know everything they were supposed to do, right? Or they didn't attend to that because they are not able to. Whatever the reasons are. So that's what Assistio Healthcare is facing. And then I'm fortunate to have a student who is a doctoral student and she's doing her research at the dialysis center at UCLA and I'm on her committee to re-look at some of the areas we looked at with readmission for dialysis patients. So this will be exciting because, you know, let's face it, even though I kept doing the research all the way through, I didn't redo a dissertation, but she is. So this is wonderful and we want replications. Nothing wrong with replications, because we don't want to hold on to things that were done 10 years ago or five years ago. It might have started then, but that's why I want to make sure I'm always connected. And it's all right with me, as I tell my, my students, my faculty, my nurses, if you find that something's better than the way I wrote it, no problem. I even be told myself. Because if something's not right, we have to have a critical eye, correct? And we need to see the new approaches. So the last area here just shows all of the different projects. And I know every single nurse who's done these projects because I was with them. So I can always help you. And I know we have your emails, I understand, correct? Yes. And so guess what will happen? When I send everything out, I will send this so that you have this. So you can see them, okay? And so this gives it all, pretty much all the same ones I just said. And then there's some other ones here also, such as even student nurse perceptions of the clinical evaluation. That nurse, um, she just finished her doctorate, and I was on her committee. Even though she was at Abington still, she just finished it, she did a great job, and she's now a doctor. And this last part's the steps. When you're identifying that clinical problem, You've got to have the steps of that theory-guided evidence-based practice framework. And when I wrote these steps, these are very easy steps. You identify the problem, right? Easy. Now you have to do the literature search, correct? So that's where your faculty members, your nurses who've done this before, your research nurses at the hospital, people like me, people who've done these projects, work with you. You're going to use their publications and you probably already are those that are already doing this, right? And that's the key. They love to hear from you. I used to email people all the time. I mean, for the email came and I called them. And they would say, oh, you don't mind working on this? No problem. Thank you. A 
and then you're going to put them in your work anyway and say that's who you used as a consultant. And they're going to be thrilled. Just remember, they're very happy to work with you because you sold their work. Then identify that conceptual theory. You don't have to know the name of the person, if it's Newman or Watson or you do, okay? But it's the principles. It's the concept. Are you doing a caring paradigm? Or are you doing a prevention intervention? Or are you doing the identifying of the patients and the family's perceptions? And then write in the discrepancies from a skilled nursing perspective. That would be new. Or are you doing self-care, such as Oron's work? That's the key. Or are you doing novice to expert? which is in most of our work. That's Bender's work. So you don't have to know the name, but when you do write the records, you'll have their name. And believe me, they will be very happy that you do that. So then this last part here, based on the concept, under study, you're writing your conceptual framework. You do not have to have a conceptual framework that looks just like Gene Watson's or like Betty Newman's or Dorothy Oral. It's just a few concepts such as patients and families equals safe environment. You're hearing their perception and you're coming up with the interventions that work. It does not have to be a beautiful picture such as myself. I can't do this beautiful picture. Someone has to help me. So that's okay. And then the very last step is do you need to do an active research program and empirically test those concepts like we did the care concepts in the OR? Or are you going to evaluate what's already in the literature or even your own colleagues have done? What's better than you say, I'd like to do an OR caring study. And then you find out from your CNO or your nurse educator who else has done a caring study in your hospital? And you find out four other people have, or did papers for when they went on to school, or even someone's published something. And you get in touch with that person and start a journal club. They are being, I can tell you, this has literally happened with our OR study. Someone had already done some work, and the nurses didn't know that. And we got in touch with her, and she came, and she wanted to help us. You see where I'm coming from? And then she became a part of it, and everyone, it's a win, -win right? Yes. That's what we want. We want our nurses, like yourselves, to feel engaged in the process, not scared of, where am I take this? How am I ever going to get this problem solved? And here's my last thing I want to bring up about this. With that OR study, the one doctor said, no way, no way, no way. This is not going to work. We have to keep the ORs sterile. That's the way it has to be. Well, yes, we're going to keep them sterile. We're going to make sure the, lip, the type of paint we use is allowed. We did all this research. Each one of those 13 nurses took a piece. We researched the type of music. Everything was researched. Now we would have thought it was his idea. <laughs> we love him doing <laughs> His idea. And that's what we want. It became all of their ideas. All the projects I just brought up. Somehow those that were against them at first, somehow it became their own. And I said, thank you so much for supporting us. Are you giving to the nurses fun to go on for their education? That's what we said. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope this helps. And I will be emailing. Thank you.